My next guest, Hillary, has three beautiful young daughters. Everything seemed picture perfect until three months ago when she received news that her seven-year-old was diagnosed with ADHD. Now, Hillary says she is at a loss on how to help her little girl and wonders if she could have prevented her daughter's disorder. Take a look. Calm down. My middle child, she's out of control. No, I don't want to. My daughter suffers from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. She is constantly angry over the smallest things. She just screams and yells. No. Being around my daughter is like walking on eggshells. Get off my bed. Having a child that suffers from ADHD is a struggle every day. Sometimes she gets very wound up that she will sit on the ground and spin in circles. I feel hopeless when I cannot control a situation with her. I feel like I neglect my other children because of my daughter's disorder. I often wonder why it had to be my child. Well, Hillary is here with us and also joining us is our very good friend. Welcome back this season, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So welcome. Yeah. Um, uh, Hillary, prior to her diagnosis, were there signs that something was going on with your seven-year-old? Yes, she was very fidgety, couldn't sit still, um, couldn't focus, would fight with her sisters a lot. Yeah, and, and siblings do that, of course. And you mentioned that you really feel guilty about your child's ADHD and are kind of wondering if this is your fault. I feel like it's my fault, like I'm guilty, there's something I could have done different. Like people think I'm a bad parent. From a medical standpoint, does parenting have anything to do with a child developing ADHD? I really want to say first to Hillary that attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or what we call ADHD, is not the result of poor parenting is not the result of poor parenting. It's also not the result of common misconceptions like, oh, I let them watch too much television or they play too many video games or eat too much sugar. So this is a real medical condition and it's a common one. About 11% of children school aged in the United States, so that's ages four to 17, are diagnosed with ADHD. That makes it one of the most common brain disorders that affects young children. So what has been the reaction of family members and even the general public to your daughter's behavior? Um, they tell me she has middle child syndrome and she just needs more spankings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good plan. Um, so look, here's the big question. I mean, how can a parent tell when a child is just misbehaving versus it being something more serious, something neurological? The symptoms of ADHD are things like some you mentioned, fidgeting, talking excessively, um, really being disorganized or disruptive, impatient, interrupting, distracted, um, also being forgetful or in, unable to pay attention to detail. So I'm, I'm looking and people are like, oh, yeah, that's all kids, right? Well, yes, true. All children may exhibit these behaviors at one point or another. But children with ADHD are a little bit different. They have these behaviors over time, usually six months or more before the age of 12. And these behaviors are excessive for their age. How does this show up in the educational process? Because I know her daughter has had an impact and they want her to repeat a grade because of her inattentiveness. It's not unusual for kids with ADHD to have trouble in school, and it can show up as learning disabilities, disruptive behaviors, mood disorders like anxiety and depression. All of these affect what's happening in school. So what are some things that parents can do to help manage their kids' ADHD symptoms? First step, visit to the pediatrician. Your pediatrician may be involved in checking for things like seizure disorders, uh, sleep disorders, things like thyroid problems. These can actually resemble um, ADHD, so you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you know what's going on there. And then you want to make sure that they um, are properly diagnosed with ADHD. Then a long-term treatment plan it gets put in place. There may be a whole range of things that we can do to manage ADHD. It may be behavioral therapy, counseling may be recommended, educational interventions may be needed, and medication might be recommended as well. 
So ask all the questions that you can possibly ask, get comfortable with the recommendations, put the treatment plan in place. Then you wanna really follow it carefully and make sure that if there are any changes, changes in behavior, <laughs> symptoms, new symptoms, you're in constant touch with, the, with your healthcare team. And Hillary, I'm saying this to you and all the parents out there that are in this situation. The first thing you gotta do is educate yourself. So you know, there's another, so many misconceptions around this disorder, and one of them is that children somehow outgrew ADHD when they uh, became adults. No, not so much. And so uh, what we now know is about 40 to 60% of children with ADHD grow into adults with symptoms of ADHD. So that long-term treatment plan that you and I keep mentioning to you is really important because you want one that's flexible and can be adjusted to the new environment. It's critical that you get the right diagnosis. For tips on the everyday management of ADHD, as well as links to parenting resources, you can visit GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. You can also sign up for our monthly newsletter for health information sent directly to your inbox. Thanks for being here again. Yeah, thank you. And for thanks having. for sharing this story. I really appreciate it. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frida Lewis Hall.